So another couple exciting new additions is uh, one of them is Edge Extrude. So if we hover over an edge and we go in here to Extrude Edge Edge Loop, what we can do is as we start pulling on an edge, uh, well first it's going to stop us because this has subdivision history and it's not going to allow us to make vert changes. We can't change the vert order on this. So what we can do is go over here and hit Delete Higher. And now we have no subdivision history. So now when I hover over an edge and pull, uh, that'll go ahead and extrude an edge. So I can go through here, I can pull out these edges, and if I get close enough, it'll snap. So we have not only the ability to extrude single-sided edges, which we didn't weren't able to before 2021, we also have this, if you hover over an edge and you hold down the space bar, again, we're in the extrude options here. Our target is edge slash edge loop, which I'll show you what that means in just a second. We have some options in here, but what I basically want to uh, show you is this one right down here, smart attraction. Now, if you don't want them to snap together, no attraction is going to be the choice you want to take. Uh, but over here with Smart Attraction, you can go through here and it'll go ahead and uh, snap. So we can go through here and just uh, extrude those edges and then they'll snap together. Now, if you want to undo these really quick or just delete all of them, just hold on Alt and drag over those faces. Hover over Face, go in here and say Delete, a single poly, and then you can just delete those right out of there. So now let's talk about modifiers here. So as I hover over an edge, it's going to give you a bunch of options in there. It's going to tell you, okay, you have edge extrude selected. And then if you use shift, it's going to snap angles. If you use alt, it's going to switch between unselected edge or selected poly loop. And then alt tapping will switch between extrude edge loop. So what does that all mean? Well, we'll start simple. We're just going to grab an edge and we're going to pull it off. And then if I, as long as I don't lift up from the tablet that I'm using, I can tap Alt once and that'll go ahead and bring this whole side out. So what I can do is I can just drag this out and then keep dragging this out or go up here and I can drag out all of these edges like so. But then do that. Now if I drag this out and I tap Alt again, it's going to put me back into just single edge mode. So I can go through here and again, I can switch between single or I can go down here and tap Alt and go to multiple. If I go through here and I'm doing single just by tapping Alt and then I go over here to multiple and then I hold down Alt, you can see I go into poly loop mode. So instead of going in here and saying, okay, I want to extrude an edge loop or an edge poly loop or anything like this, you can usually just stay in here. It might switch it for you, uh, but the functionality basically stays the same. So again, Alt to single, Alt tap once to go to an entire edge and then hold down Alt to go to basically an open mesh border. Now when you hover over an edge, you're gonna see that the shift is gonna snap your angle. So let's go ahead and move this around here. So as I uh, and tap alt, so we're just doing one edge. Uh, just by default, as I pull this out, I pretty much have a free angle. And in fact, if we hover over the edge and go in here, you're gonna see free angle is selected. However, I can switch between planar and perpendicular without having to come in here. So if I do this, uh, pull out an edge, and I'm on a free angle, and I tap shift once, in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna say, it's gonna say, hey, you switched to planar angle. So now, it's gonna stay on that plane. So that means I can pull it over here, I can pull it over here, I can go up and down. It looks like it's going up and down. However, when I switch to the side here, um, it's gonna, everything's gonna disappear because it's a single plane, but it's gonna stay on that planar surface. So basically, this whole thing is a plane. It's all on one surface, as you can see, or as you can't see, but as we go over here and we pull this edge over here, or I've tapped Alt and I want to do an entire edge um, surface, no matter what I do, you know, I can pull it over here, but it's still staying on that planar angle. This plane right here uh, is going to determine, as I drag these edges off, it's going to stay uh, planar with those. So if I, uh, again, hold down an edge, we'll tap Alt once just to go into a single edge. So we're on planar angle. We went from free to planar. I'm going to tap Shift one more time, and that's going to go to perpendicular. So now as I drag this in or out, you know, I can, I still have, you know, freedom to move it however I'd like. However, when I let go, you're going to see it's going to go exactly 90 degrees from this original surface. So if we go in here and tap Alt once, we can drag a planar angle down, or we can tap Shift to go to free, we can tap Shift to go to planar, we can tap Shift to go to perpendicular. So if we're on perpendicular, you know, this is going to be perpendicular, this is going to be perpendicular, or we can go back up, although you can't really see it from that side, I'll show you a way around that. So if we stick with perpendicular, we're basically going to make stair steps. Or we can uh, hold down Alt, we can pull down, and then do another perpendicular out, and then do another perpendicular down. So you can very quickly start creating uh, surfaces that way. So we've done Alt and Shift, and one more thing we need to talk about is Control. So the Control key is also going to do something else. We're going to go in here, we'll do Extrude, Edge Loop, we'll switch this back to Free Angle and we'll uh, just drag out one. If you need to, just tap Alt to go back into dragging out one edge. Now by default, if I drag out about so far and then I hold down Control and then keep dragging, it's going to make uh, another extrude exactly the same size as when I stopped. And of course, you can mix this with anything you'd like. If you're you know, pulling this out, you can hold down, you tap Shift, 
you can go back to planar and then again just hold down control and then wherever you stopped last will be extruding exactly that original width from that original one you pulled out. Hold down control and just keep dragging. Uh, if you go in here there's going to be a single row, num rows, and row size. So right now we're on single row which gives us this control action. Again just hold down control and just keep dragging out. It'll give you those. If you hover over an edge and you go into num rows, now we're on five. So what that means is I'm going to drag out an edge and it's going to give me five divisions every time. However, since we're in num rows now, if you hold down control and keep dragging, now you can make these more or less. So it kind of depends on if you want to go through here and say, okay, I want to drag out this many and then brrr, drag out some more of the exact same size, then make sure you go in here and you choose single row. If you know that you want to have an entire distance that you want to cover, but you don't know exactly how many divisions you want, or if you do know exactly how many divisions you want, then don't use control, just use num rows and type in a number. Uh, but this will give you control to go through here and again, control, using the control key, hold down control, and then pull along here and you'll get as many divisions as you want. So when I go into this edge now, you know, we've done single row, we've done num rows, we can also do row size. Uh, it's set at 0.5, let's, or 0.51, let's just set that to type in 0.5. So now when I drag this out, and I keep dragging, it's always going to snap to 0.5. And then you're going to notice when I was in here, and I'm like, oh, you know what, I don't like that size, I'm going to hold down control. This is actually going to determine that number now. So when I go through here and I'm like, you know what, I always want them to be this size. If you go back into your edge, it's going to set it to 0.34056, which is that edge. So now when you use this, they're all going to be 0.03456. So if you want to change that, just hold down control, set a new size, and now all of these, if you just go through here and tap, will be the exact same size. Let's go ahead and undo all that. Uh, if we go back in here, let's set this back to extrude. Uh, we'll say free angle again and then back to single row, just kind of reset all this. Uh, you're going to see extrude surrounding faces and regular extrude. So if you want to extrude those surrounding faces by holding down or tapping alt, it'll do that for you. Uh, if you don't, if you go to regular extrude, it'll just basically uh, take that away from you. Now you're going to see I'm pulling on here and it's not doing anything. It's actually going to leave a sliver behind if you're not careful. So start pulling and tap alt and that'll put you back into regular extrude mode. So this will just give you regular extrude, and then if you tap Alt, it'll go to row. It just won't do uh, that row extrude. I mean, it'll kind of give you that functionality. It's just a little bit different, a little bit more hard to control. Let's go through here. We'll switch to perpendicular angle with our Shift key by tapping, and then hold down Alt, and now we can go through here and pull down. And uh, it's still similar, perp uh, similar functionality, uh, but generally speaking, I'd just leave it on extrude or extend surrounding faces. So we've already talked about the angles, we've talked about the size, well, we haven't really talked about the size. So uh, free size is what we've been using. So if we go through here and we tap Alt once. So now what we're doing is we're extruding this edge. And again, we can tap Shift to go keep it on this plane. However, we're still able to move it side to side. If you want to avoid doing that, you can go down here and you can set it to extend sides or parallel sides. Now these do similar things depending on what your parent geometry is. So if this parent geometry, uh, these edges, set up very straight, they're already parallel. So when I go through here and I pull this out, you're gonna see that extend sides on a planar angle is just gonna kinda pull out from that plane. So I can go through here and again, just kinda pull these out here. And it's gonna stay to that plane and it's just gonna extend those out like so. However, if I go in here and I say parallel sides, it's gonna do the exact same thing, give you the exact same result at least in that scenario. If I go here to taper sides, I can go through here and I can start, as I'm dragging out, I can take, I can go wider or narrower uh, depending on where I put my brush stroke. So that'll kind of keep it planar since I have planar selected on my planar angle. Uh, and I can, I can also switch that. So if I want to tap shift, now I'm on perpendicular with tapered sides or tap shift. Now I'm on free angle with tapered sides or I can tap shift again and stay planar like that. Now when I do tapered, if I tap I'm on planar here and I tap uh, Alt. That's gonna bring out this whole row. However, you're gonna see I can taper in those outer edges. Now it's not going to taper in these inside ones. It's just gonna taper again those outer edges that we have. But if I want to, I can go ahead and bring this in and then go ahead and I can shoot this out. Now, when I do that, if I go back in here and I do extrude edge loop, keep planar on here, but instead we're gonna do extend sides. So when I do extend sides here, you're gonna see these things want to keep continuing in that direction. So let's go through here, let's do this one more time. Uh, edge loop, planar, taper sides. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to taper in those corners just slightly. So when I go back in here and do an extend sides, it's going to keep extending in that direction until finally um, those points merge because we have our smart attraction turned on. So extend is just going to continue those angles that you have. 
Uh, same thing for one, if we go through here and we say, let's go ahead and taper just one. So we're going to taper this down a little bit, and then we'll switch this over to extend on plane, and then we can just extend those back down. Where parallel is going to come into play is if we go back to taper sides, and we do an entire side here just by tapping alt. So again, we're going to slightly taper those sides, and then I come back in here and say, okay, now give me parallel sides, and I pull this out. Those are going to say, okay, these are the edges I want, and I'm going to take a parallel line straight out of here. So I can go parallel through here, I can hold down control and drag out more, and then I can also go in here and I can tap shift once to go perpendicular, and I can start making a stair step, and then tap shift to go into free, or go back into planar if I want to go you know, down and then hold down control and just pull more edges in there. So I'll go ahead and do all that. So that should give you a pretty good idea of what these angles are doing and what these sides are doing. Now there's two types of attraction in here. We'll go ahead and put this back to free and free sides. So extrude, edge, edge loop. And you're gonna see we have smart attraction, which is going to snap your verts together. And we also have the snap to surface. So let's talk a little bit about that. This is really, uh, this is really fun. 